in DaVinci Resolve 20.1, we have another new feature here called Timeline Subclip, which can be created by using in and out points in the timeline to select a section of the timeline that you want to be converted into a subclip. And then we're going to right click the timeline ruler there and in the menu, select create subclip or you can use the keyboard shortcut option slash alt b so now you have a new media file here created in the media pool for these selected clips Alternatively, you can use the in and out handles that you see in the viewer jog bar to select the section of the timeline that you want to be converted into a subclip. So once that's done, simply just right click and in the menu, go ahead and select create subclip. So now you have a subset of this timeline that is now being converted into a subclip. Now, in many ways, a timeline subclip behaves just like a compound clip. So with the in and out point in place, what we can do is to hit the delete key to get rid of all the content in between these two points. And instead, what we can do is to bring in the timeline subclip to fill this gap. So now you will see that it's just uh, one clip takes up much less space. And on top of that, it looks very clean and you can make uh, changes to all the embedded clips at once. Again, just like a compound clip. Now you can also right click this subclip and in the menu choose to decompose it in place using clips only so this will bring back all the original clips and you can also uh, choose in the menu choose to uh, open it in a timeline here so this will open all the embedded clips in a separate timeline where you can make changes to these clips with that being said, let's go ahead and select both clips here and then let's come to the inspector panel. We're just going to bring down the zoom setting a little bit there. So now to go back to the original timeline, we need to come to the timeline menu option here. Click on the drop down and then select timeline one. So this will take us back to the previous timeline that we were in. And now you will see all the changes being reflected in the timeline sub clip. Now, one other thing I want to call out here is that if you want to change the duration of the clips here, either to increase it or decrease it and then go back to our original timeline, you won't see this change taking place right away. So the reason is really to kind of protect the clips to the right of this subclip. So if you still want to see the change, what you can do is to just drag and drop that subclip into the timeline now. So now you will see all the changes uh, that we just made earlier. It's going to be much longer in duration as a result. So that's something you can do should you choose to do so. Now, just like a compound clip, you can also take this entire clip directly to, let's say, the color page here to do some color grading. So I'm just going to apply a blue tint very quickly. And now let's take it back to the edit page. You can see this change reflected on uh, all the clips that are embedded within this subclip. Now, you can also take it directly to the fusion page and uh, to apply some fusion effects. So I'm just going to bring a transform node here, quickly bring down the size. Now, in case you're wondering where the color grading changes that we just made, well, you can click on media out one node there and then under color grade, switch to color instead of none. So now let's take it back to the edit page. You will see that not only are we seeing the color grading, but also the fusion effects that we just applied uh, to all the embedded clips within this subclip. And on top of that, you can speed ramp this entire clip very easily as well. So with the new way to speed ramp in DaVinci Resolve 20.1, as well as this new timeline uh, subclip feature, you can easily adjust the speed for a lot of different clips all at once. So this is definitely something that's going to save you a lot of time during editing. However, unlike a compound clip, a timeline subclip comes by default as a timeline and it also has some added benefits as a result of it being a timeline. So to access it, for example, you can come to the timeline menu here and simply click on the clip that you just created. The subclip that you just created, this will take you directly to the timeline subclip. Uh, instead of trying to find it in the media pool, um, this is easily accessible up top here in the timeline menu. In addition, we can click on the timeline options menu at the top left corner here. And then in the menu, let's go ahead and activate display stacked timelines option. So this will now allow you to click on that plus sign to activate another timeline. And in the drop down here, we're going to choose one of our subclips. So now you can edit the subclip 
right next to the original timeline. You can also click on that little plus icon at the top right corner there. This will open up another panel right underneath the original timeline. And then in the drop down, we are going to go ahead and choose our sub clip. So now you have the sub clip right underneath the original timeline. So what we can do is to add a side by side. So let's choose, let's select both clips here. And then we're going to just uh, bring down the zoom setting a little bit there. And then if we just uh, simply click on the timeline, the original timeline up top. So now you will see this change being uh, implemented right away in real time. So being able to do this really is a result of the sub clip being a timeline. So despite being a great alternative to a compound clip, in many ways, it is not without its problems. So for example, as of now, there is no easy way for you to change the name of the subclip. You're kind of stuck with subclip one, subclip two. Maybe something will change in the future, but I'm not holding my breath on that one. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And as always, I will see you guys next time.